They say the world looks brighter from behind a smile. And according to the American Association of Cosmetic Dentists, an estimated 10 million Americans will spend $1.7 billion making their smiles brighter by bleaching or whitening their teeth this year. Dr. Doyle Williams of the DentaQuest Foundation is here with what you need to know before you bleach or whiten. Good morning to you, Dr. Williams. Good to see you. Good morning. Great Why to be here. Why are we all so obsessed? I mean, I think there, there actually there was an expression for a while, like the, the bleacherexics, the people who are whitening their teeth too much. Natalie, that's a great question. I think it all started with the extreme makeover in reality TV. But everybody mm. saw that you could have white teeth in a matter of what looked like minutes or hours. Uh, and we were just became obsessed with it. And there are so many over-the-counter products now that you can buy and use at home. Are they just as effective as what you can get when you go to your dentist's office? They're getting just as good. They're just not as quick. Right. So, for example, if you go into the dental office, you might be able to have white teeth in one hour. Mm -hmm. But the take-home products might take a little bit longer. But some of them are working as quick as a long weekend, three or four days, up to three or four weeks. Right. And a lot of these, as we see here, some of these products, I mean, these whitening, even mouthwashes and, and gums, all of these things can kind of help you extend the life of, of whether you're, you whiten or bleach your teeth? Exactly. Some of these products that just say whitening on them mm -hmm. are just help to uh, maintain the whiteness after you've bleached your teeth. What is the difference, by the way, between bleaching or whitening your teeth? Is there a difference? There certainly is. The FDA describes whitening as just taking off the stain from the outside of a tooth, so restoring it to its natural color. And uh -huh. that can be done with just brushing your teeth or going to the dentist and having them cleaned. Whereas right. bleaching, we use a hydrogen peroxide, and we're actually going to lighten the tooth above its ability to naturally be white. Are all teeth created equal when it comes to whitening, or should some people stay away from it? It's not going to work for them. And definitely they're not created equal. Mm. And we've got some pictures that I think the audience is going to see that will show uh, yellow and brown stains tend to whiten and brighten mm -hmm. very well. Uh, gray stains are a little bit harder to cover up because they've got some dark pigments in them. It may take uh, power bleaching to do that. Uh, as we get older, our teeth get thinner, the enamel does, and right. it's very hard to whiten a tooth with thin enamel. And, and what is the, the difference between teeth discoloration and teeth staining? So stain is something that's on the outside, like if we're uh, smokers or coffee or tea, right. uh, dark or drinks, wine. or wine. Those mm -hmm. are the things that uh, stain the tooth and can be scraped off. Whereas discoloration is the inside color of the tooth, the natural color. And that could be from things we ate, minerals right. in our water or foods. Right. And let's talk about some of the bleaching and whitening products that we have here. And, and as we mentioned, some of these traditional toothpaste whitening products, how do they hold up when it comes to actually whiten, whitening your teeth? That's a great question. So the toothpaste with whitening, uh, are, they have a minimal benefit, but they can whiten maybe one or two shades, what will appear to be one or two shades, just by removing all the stain from the outside of a tooth. And I, I imagine just by maintenance and obviously brushing your teeth all the time, if you have had any bleaching or whitening, that's also going to help you maintain that look. That is a terrific way to maintain the whitening. Right. Okay. And then what about the tradition, non-traditional whitening products? As we mentioned, the mouthwash, the gums, floss. Do they really help too, or is that just... Uh... Yeah, so once again, in the maintenance phase, these uh, products right here mm -hmm. are going to help to maintain mainly the gums. So people ask me, what in the world could gum really do? Mm -hmm. It stimulates saliva flow, and saliva is the natural cleanser of the mouth. These products in the middle are the ones that really do the bleaching. Yeah. So these are your gels and your trays and your white strips, those kind of things. Right. And these have a hydrogen peroxide uh, in them that is a bleaching agent at different concentrations. The lower the concentration, the longer it takes to bleach. Now what about when you go to the dentist's office and you see the, the light technique that they use too, the blue light? Does that work? I mean, what what is it about that technology? that is different than what you get in the gels or the strips. And that's actually been introduced into one of these over-the-counter uh -huh. products that has its own little blue light in it. Uh, the non Which one, really? Th this one <laughs> oh, right okay. here. The ones without I light, light. Team to do, seem to do as well as the ones with the light. There's not a noticeable difference, but uh, people like to think that the light uh, and the heat that's generated from it will activate the bleach more or make it soak in. We should mention really quick the side effects because as I, I've done this once before and, and the next day could hardly eat a thing and it hurt even just having the wind hit my teeth. Right? We were talking <laughs> yeah, about that. Yeah. And when you go to the dentist and you have a, a very high concentration of bleach on your teeth, uh -huh. uh, sensitivity is the number one side effect. The second one is... Uh, that goes actually, away with time though, right? It certainly does. As your teeth remineralize, they get better and the sensitivity goes away.
And then the second side effect is you can actually burn your gums. So mm-hmm. people like to think, you know, if a little bit does a little good, a lot must do a lot of good. And mm-hmm. we've got these bleachaholics yeah. who uh, use a lot of bleach, and all the time they spill it over on their, onto their gums, it can really do some damage. So you can really so burn your gums. The important careful. thing is we really have to follow manufacturer's directions. What about the enamel of your teeth? Does it do anything to that as well? I've heard people have cavities more over time. Is that true or not? Uh, it shouldn't be. So yeah. the enamel of a tooth is what is actually being bleached. Right. It's almost like frosting a piece of glass. Mm-hmm. But uh, nature will take care of it and it will remineralize and that's why the whiteness tends to go away after a few months or, or a year. It's because the tooth is getting clear again and you have to bleach right. it. All of these things, maintenance, maintenance. Dr. Doyle maintenance, Williams, maintenance. thanks so much. Great to meet you. Thank, Thank you. you.